Greaves. Hi there, Thack from Thack Ironworks. Welcome back. Um, we are in our Greek hop lights kit that we're building here, and Greaves are the final piece of armor for this, so let's dive right into it. As per usual, I went to Google and pulled up uh, some images. This was the one that seemed to be the winner for me in a uh, museum somewhere. Uh, apologize for the crappiness of the quality here, but I think you get the idea. I'm, I'm going with something that has anatomical detailing on it there, so really a representation of the front of the shin. Uh, went ahead and made a template and found this guy standing around the shop here and I thought I'd put him to good use. So here we have our shin here, which is a little anemic and I, so I built it up with plasticine just to kind of pop out some of the details, the anatomical details on there, which are slightly stylized. Um, I exaggerated them so that the, it just kind of gives me a starting point um, when I start hammering into the bronze of, of what I'm bringing up and then I can make it more subtle as I go there. But my template fits on there thusly, wrap around. And also before we begin, I've spent the last month of evenings uh, constructing these sandals here. Um, did a little bit of research and I actually reached out to a couple of my Greek experts and sandals are a really tough one to find. There's not a whole lot of evidence, uh, like really good um, uh, historical or ar archaeological evidence left for them. So left a lot to be desired and gave me therefore a fair bit of latitude. So I decided um, just to design something which would be a basically a staging ground or a platform to hold the greaves in place which we will address as we get to that point. But anyway I wanted to build something that was a, a good structure that reached up the legs and, and gave me a good point to mount these things on. So I think they're pretty cool and I know what you're thinking. Um, why didn't we do a video showing how to make this? But I, I consider myself an amateur leather maker and not really my forte. Perhaps in the future this might be something we'll look into if there is enough interest. But for now, let's get into the bronze. So you've seen all this stuff before. I've got my template, gonna put it onto the piece of bronze, cut it out anneal it and start hammering so without any other preamble. Here we go. All right, so we are uh, 15, 20 minutes into the process and uh, shape is happening, but it's certainly not anywhere close to the finished shape we want. Uh, things like this I find, you think greaves are pretty simple U gutter shape, um, but the subtlety of making it work is, is quite tricky. A lot of nuances and stuff there. So I think I'm gonna find this in the next um, hour or two gonna be fairly tricky in trying to get the shape actually to look the way it's supposed to and to fit as it's supposed to. Uh, but right now I'm very hungry so I'm gonna have some lunch, re-anneal these, come back and let's get into it. Okay, several hours in and um, things are looking uglier than ever before. Um, I reached the point where I needed to get uh, the recurve and that's the problem with griefs is that they're all about the, um, compound curves. Things are happening in different planes at the same time and metal really does not, sheet metal does not like to 
bend in two directions at the same time. I think we discussed this in the breastplate video. In fact, I'm sure we did. And if you are a viewer, you've probably seen that. If you're watching the Greaves video, I think so. So anyway, that's what I'm wrestling with right now. So that is a, a difficult transition to try to get this to swoop. It curves out here. I don't know if you're seeing this out there and in there, but it has to come back down and around. If I grab my sandal here, you can kind of see how you have a bit of a slight S curve that way and then imagine that having to come back there. So that is what I'm wrestling with right now. Um, and I really find that is probably the most difficult part of doing shapes like this. Not really much more that I can articulate about it. It's just something that you have to wrestle through. And most of that is done using a valley stake. I'm coming in this way and conversely this way, working back and forth on that. I have to coax it one way and the other until I achieve the actual shape and which is uh, quite a laborious process. Enough chit chat, back into it. I will see you soon. Some time has elapsed, as you may witness by the evidence of my haircut. Um, we're just at the tail end, hopefully, of the pandemic of 2021. And we are a year into this right now. This is early March. So if you're watching this in the distant future, that's what's going on. I was just happy to go and get a haircut. So anyway, back to the greaves. Um, I've shaped them and I've got them rough hammered into shape and they fit onto my calf. So essentially I had started out using my mannequin here with as a guide, uh, but very quickly um, realized I had to fit it to my own legs, which I knew, but uh, I needed to spend more time on that. This didn't really help me very much. So when using my own legs, I'm trying to get it so that it fits ergonomically on there and there's no binding and pinching and that sort of thing. So I've achieved that shape on both of them. Now what I need to do is refine this surface. It's quite lumpy. Uh, so I'm going to planish it over my new stake here and that will refine the surface but also work hardens it. Um, I haven't annealed this for quite some time now so it's already work hardened to a certain extent. Planishing the entire surface should give it a consistent hardness and this should be battle ready by the time I'm done this process. So here we go, lots of hammering.
All right, so all planished, work hardened, shaped, um, ready to go. And now what I'm going to do is make the attachment um, pieces. And namely, I'm going to do a slot. That's why I'm holding this up here. A slot like this, and then I am going to make a little bronze piece like this, which will go onto the sandal. And then I'm going to make a little copper cutter pin like this, which will hold the whole thing together, then this will be open, um, open to hold it in place. Nice little cutter pin attachment. Are you getting this, Eric? All right, so uh, once again, if you have been watching the videos, you would have seen the breastplate, and that was my theory on that whole thing, putting it together, and these cutter pins are the same design will be used on the cuirass, so the breast and back will be held together using these guys here. So I'm just gonna demonstrate very quickly how I make these and how I make these. Now comes the tedious part of putting the notches in, positioning that whole thing. Uh, was not on the camera, but I actually put the sandal on, put the um, greave in place and drew some lines, which you probably can't see there in pencil here, which gave me my uh, indication points where this has to go on now. So I just made a mark here where this one will go on. And so it's just a matter of a lot of Drawing rectangles on the correct angle. Okay, so I've got my little rectangle there. Now with my drill, still I have the eighth inch drill bit in there, and I'm just going to drill holes in the corners. All right, so I've just drilled a series of holes here. Now I'm gonna take my drill and just leaning it, working it back and forth and very crudely cutting my line here. So we are ready to do the antiquing. So we've got our trusty gun blue here. I'm gonna paint that on. And then after it uh, darkens everything up, I will put it in the water to neutralize it and then use steel wool to brush it out. You've probably seen this before.
Okay, I've got my short pants on and I'm ready for the maiden voyage of these greaves here. Uh, I just wanted to point out on the bottom of these sandals, I put hobnails because I have found in the past when I make just a, a traditional leather sole, they are slippery AF. And this gives a little bit of traction, also very cool. Uh, don't know if the Greeks actually had hobnails. No, the Romans did and they used them quite a bit. Anyway, I put what I felt was a light, little kind of, uh, I've got a little swirl there and these radiating lines here, thought was fairly Greek motif. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna put my sandals on now. I designed these with a thick leather piece um, so that the top of the greave, or the bottom of the greave, I should say, can kind of rest against that. I found in wearing greaves over the years that gravity always come, becomes a factor and they tend to dig into um, the top of your foot there. And um, just thought that if I could get a nice thick piece of leather there, that would alleviate that somewhat. So not sure how this is all gonna play out. I'm hoping that these fit and go where they're supposed to. Um, cue the Hobbit music and give me some time putting these on. All right, before I throw the greaves on top of these puppies here, I just thought I would feature the sandals themselves because I know people are going to ask. Um, and as I said earlier, I didn't really have good reference to go on. Things like uh, footwear don't really survive the ages very often, so we don't have a whole lot other than a couple of really um, sketchy kind of um, images on vases and things like that. So I took a lot of latitude and just kind of went my own direction with this and, and just did, I guess I'm paying an homage to all the Hercules movies that I've enjoyed over the years, whether it be guys like Steve Reeves or Lou Ferrigno or even uh, The Rock, Dwayne. His last Hercules move didn't like the movie that much, but I think I liked uh, the armor and uh, the shields and stuff like that. It's some pretty cool things. Anyway, so I took a lot of latitude historically with these things, but I think they came out pretty cool and I've got my hobnails on there. Um, they're quite comfortable. Need a lot of breaking in. They're, they're stiff leather, so uh, I need to put a couple hundred miles on before my I stop getting blisters on the top of my feet, but I think they will be comfortable then. Anyway, let's try on the greaves and see how that works. All right, so success. That actually feels reasonably comfortable. I feel a couple areas, I think here, I need to bring this out a little bit. And I'll probably end up putting some padding inside and that might alleviate some of that. I've got pretty good movement. I'm not sure if I can squat down fully with this, but pretty comfortable, actually surprisingly comfortable. The way it fits on here, and when I put impact against it, it all just distributes against my legs quite nicely. So I'm pretty happy there, I just lost a pin. Um, uh, I would, when I put these cotter pins in for a real battle, I would actually pull that up so that it's locked into place. And again, I'm not sure about the historical accuracy of that, but I think it's, it's more discreet than having buckles and straps. And I like the idea of the way it's held in position on this whole apparatus here. So there we go, that is the greaves. And that concludes the uh, armor pieces for this suit. All right, so we've got all the defensive pieces done. We've got the shield and our uh, all our body armor done. Now we need to weaponize this outfit. So uh, next will be sword, spear. Um, also, I want to make um, some accoutrement for this, such as my little needle nose pliers. This is looking very 21st century. I'd like to do a more traditional pair of tongs that I would use for putting on my pieces. Um, so that will be an upcoming video as well. And also, I don't know, 
flint and steel, stuff like that. Something that uh, a hoplite might be carrying in his personal kit. So we'll just uh, accessorize this suit since we've got such a nice thing going here. So I will see you in the next video. We're moving on. I'm not sure which one that'll be, probably the sword. So see you soon. Back out. See ya!